killers. Well, we know that they turn people who try to escape into effect infected, so... There's also Lev, though, too. I don't think she would have left without Lev, so Lev might also be at the pillars. Dude, she is not doing well. I'm worried about Ellie. Wow, they did quick work. Good for them. <laughs> I can't even pull out guns or anything. I'm betting this gets full of water during, like, high tide or something. This is brutal. Abby? Ponytail. <sighs> it's not her. saw that ponytail. Oh my god, she looks terrible. Misdirect, though. Oh, no, Lev. You okay, kid? up a little bit. <laughs> the boats from the menu. It's the boat from the menu.
I can't let you leave. I'm not doing this. part of this. At the point where I don't want to hit square. Oh, my God. 
Can't be the only one who was tearing up at that, right? <laughs> oh, those fingers. I don't know, Ellie. I don't know if you get to come back here and be okay. I'm... I'm glad she did what she did, though. I'm glad she let her go. Dina might have gone back to Jackson. We left her here by herself. What else would she do? She'd go back to her family. She's not here. Cost everything, Ellie. Damn, this story's sad. as the carving Joel did. We're going to finish that song.
her fingers. She can't play it. that same night hey. she came to talk to him after that dance what are you drinking coffee where'd you get that People that came through last week. Oh. A little embarrassed as to what I had to trade to get it, but <laughs> it's not bad. I had Seth under control. And you need to stop harassing Jesse about my patrols. Okay. Uh, Dina. Is she your girlfriend? Hmm. No. <laughs> no, she... That was just one kiss. It doesn't mean anything. She just... I don't know why she did that. But you do like her. <laughs> so stupid. I have no idea what that girl's intentions are, but... But I do know that she would be lucky to have you. You're such an asshole. <laughs> I'm not trying to. I was supposed to die in that hospital. My life would have fucking mattered. But you took that from me. Somehow, the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment. I would do it all over again. I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. But I would like to try. Here's that olive branch. Take it, Pops. I like that. <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna cry.
Yeah, just a little touch of catharsis. Alright girl, I don't want to see you in a part three. You go and have a happy life, okay? Make the most out of what you, <laughs> what you got left. My god, that was a beautiful ending. What a great game. So, I mean, at this point, this is the point where, um, I'll talk about some, like, major differences between the, the two people that love this game and the people that don't love this game. And I think one of the major things that it comes down to is, well, I mean, one of the arguments I've heard a lot is that they don't like the writing. And they're actually, they're hitting upon the wrong thing there when they say they don't like the writing, because the writing is very good in this game. Um, what they're actually getting at is that they don't agree with the plot that happened. They don't agree with the plot choices that happened because they didn't like it. They didn't like the characters they liked died. That's what they're saying. Well, I mean, I'm not speaking for everybody, obviously. I'm sure there are people who would have other arguments as well, but I see people argue bad writing when they actually mean that they don't like the plot. And there is a difference. Plot is one aspect of writing. The way characters are written and their arcs are a part of the writing. There's a lot that goes into the overall idea of good writing. Um, the themes in this story are part of the writing. And whether or not those themes are fleshed out, whether they resolve, whether the themes feel like they have meaning, all of that stuff falls into writing. The themes in this game are really well implemented and really well covered in this game. Um, the revenge story. Um, a traditional story would have simply decided to resolve their themes of revenge by having both Abby and her die in the end, which I thought could have been a possibility here had they gone kind of the traditional narrative route that is kind of a trope at this point, right? But they do a really nice job of subverting tropes where they can, I feel like, and creating interesting characters and character arcs that still make sense. Um, the key to a revenge story is, I mean, frankly, like, they can't condone the violence, right? And this game definitely doesn't. So thematically, it definitely has to take more of a somber tone. I knew that was a necessity for this story, is that it wouldn't necessarily be a happy ending, right? It's a revenge story. Like, they, they, don't, they don't end happily. Um, but they managed to, I don't know, have, have a, a tinge of hope at the end of it, right? I mean, she was so close to not letting go there at the end with Abby. So close to killing Abby there and fulfilling that revenge but she didn't but I mean her choices still had consequence right and that's why they had to have that scene where we had Dina and her on that farm is because that really emphasizes that 
but I totally understand that there's going to be people who don't like what happened in this game. And that's a totally valid opinion to have. And I don't blame them for it. Like, this type of story is not for everybody. Me, I have always loved stories like this. And in fact, um, I tend not to like... Like, I like stories that are seeped in some level of realistic human reaction. Whereas, like, a lot of the Hollywood stuff that we see today is just kind of, like, way over the top. Things aren't super realistic in the way that people interact with each other, the way they speak to one another. The consequences of actions are generally not there. Um, and I feel like they've gone out of their way to try and make that the case here. And I have always enjoyed that in my media. I don't know, there's... Like, I really want to, like, compose my thoughts and... I'm trying to do this on the fly, but there's so much that I could cover here and talk about different aspects of this game that I loved. Um, I didn't even have many issues with the pacing. I could see where some people would, but I enjoyed the gameplay, so... Um, since I enjoy the gameplay, um, the pacing felt great to me. Um, I don't feel like there was any points where I felt bored. Or, like, come on, let's move this along. There were times where I was frustrated because I was playing poorly, but that one's on me. <laughs> so, that did not equate to not enjoying the game at any point. Like, yeah. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, because um, I know that there will be people who don't like this game in the same way that I do. And I, I, I want to hear your perspective. Um... Yeah. I don't know. I I really did like it, though. With how many scripts that I've kind of read and stuff, like, y you saw me throughout this playthrough trying to read the script. In, in other words, try to interpret where the story might be going, some of the things that might be touched upon later. Some of those things are signposted by writers, and some of those things are just, like, things that I know narratively have to be brought back up. It's, um... A concept that comes up a lot when you learn about um, script writing and things like that, Chekhov's gun, right? If you see a gun in the first act, that gun has to go off by the third act, right? And so there's all sorts of things that are presented to us in the story here where I'm like, okay, they have to pay that off. The fact that they started this game out having skipped um, the events of the dance that they were talking about, um, I pretty much knew at the beginning that we would come back to that as a catharsis by the end. That that interaction with Joel would be incredibly, incredibly important. Um, I figured that one out pretty quickly. And as you could see, that was like the last, literally the last thing we saw. Sincere thanks from all of us to Bruce Straley for his instrumental role. I missed the rest of that. Mm, okay. Ashley Birch was Mel. Hmm. Ashley Johnson. Just seeing if I recognize more of these names. Erica Lindbeck. I love Erica Lindbeck. She's a great voice actress. Wolf Militia. <laughs> uh, Jesse. Uh, Erica Lindbeck played Jesse in uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake and Futaba in Persona 5. So. She's good. But yeah, um... I'm of two minds, right? A lot of people... Even, even in my comments were like, Oh, I don't know if you should play this game. You're not gonna like it. Like, there's bad shit. People are review bombing it and all that. I don't know. Like, I knew from the start that I would enjoy this game. I loved the first one, which also had um, a mixed reception because, well, I mean, it's it's exactly my style. I mean, go and watch No Country for Old Men. 
I love that movie. Drive, I love that movie. Like, noir aesthetic stories, ones that have protagonists that are generally, or, and, or often, not good people, um, and don't necessarily have to have good endings. Like, that's the kind of stuff I eat up like butter, man. I love it. I love it. Noir and neo-noir is my favorite genre, and there's a lot of things that are taken from that genre in these games. So I, I knew that I was predisposed to, like, this t type of story. And uh, people were convinced that I wouldn't like it, and it's like, well, you don't, you don't know my tastes. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like this. And they're like, oh, I don't know. We'll have to talk about this when we're done. I enjoyed every aspect of that story. I don't have an issue with characters dying um, that we that you've grown to like and love. Um, Joel dying right at the beginning, like it's sad. It's absolutely sad, but that does not equate to bad for me. That does not equate to unenjoyable story for me. As long as the story like makes good on its themes and its um, ideas by the end, I'm incredibly satisfied. And I feel like I got that here. So, and, and I recognize that that is to taste, right? Um, I have had many, many discussions with people who do not like specific movies that I absolutely love. And it's just a matter of taste. So, there's, there's nothing wrong with disagreeing with me, but like, I don't know. I, I was rubbed a little bit the wrong way when people were telling me, oh, you shouldn't even play this. I'm like, but I know I'm going to like this. I know I am. And so, you know, if, if any of you were those commenters and felt like I was maybe a little bit short in the way that I responded to you, um, don't take it personally. Um, I hope that you understand that it's just like, I know what I like, and I know how to decide what to play, and I don't, I generally bristle at the idea of somebody telling me not to do something. <laughs> I'm stubborn that way. Um, and especially when it's something that I'm like looking forward to and something that a lot of people haven't experienced yet. Um, I was under the assumption that a lot of the people talking to me before I started playing it were people who hadn't even finished the game themselves and were maybe basing their ideas off of only the leaks. And I have no way of proving or disproving whether or not that's the truth. So that was a little unfair of me, but um, to just assume that. But I do think that there are a lot of people out there that aren't going to play this game and are going to champion the idea that this is a bad game when it's just clearly not and um, I would just advise people like there are ways to determine whether you're going to like something pre-release or not and that is to find reviewers that you know and trust they don't have to have the same tastes as you but they should have similar tastes and on occasion you can have a couple in that repertoire that also have completely opposite tastes of you and you can use those reviews to kind of get an idea of whether or not you're going to like a game. Um, just basing it off of random reviews from reviewers that you don't know their taste to begin with is not the way to do it. Um, and using Metacritic and um, different things like that are not the way to do it. Um, you should find several reviewers that you can kind of understand where their tastes lie and how they align with yours and based on their reviews a lot of times you can suss out whether or not you're going to enjoy a game or not whether or not that has to do with genre or whether that has to do the style of storytelling that's going on and this game is very much about the storytelling and i knew that i was going to like this game so I'm really glad that I played it. I'm really glad that people are here watching it. And I welcome all of the different uh, opinions that are going to come out um, in the discussion down below. So please do have that discussion with me. Um, we, can, we can talk about our disagreements. And if you do post a uh, opinion of yours, um, I'll probably respond, right? I, I'm going to enjoy talking about this game. And um, if I disagree with you, don't take that as me telling you that you're wrong for your opinion, but more of, okay, um, I see where you're coming from, and here's where I'm coming from. This is how I approached this part of the story and why I enjoyed it, whereas you maybe didn't. And the reasons why I enjoyed it, you know? Um, because we come, we come at these stories with different lenses. 
and it's really, really fun to see how different lenses can interpret a story and, you know, how we either accept or don't accept the things that are presented in that story based on that lens that we come in with. Um, in the old churchyard. Listen to the song, though. <laughs> Is that Troy Baker actually singing that? I'm guessing that if that's the case, then the singer before was Ashley. And go or a um um. Home to God. What's her name? Is no. Um, yeah, I'm Ashley Johnson. For a second, I, like in my mind, I was thinking Ashley Birch, and I was like, that's clearly wrong. But Ashley Johnson. There we go. I'm going there. No more to. At this point, I have to kind of like immerse myself in the online discussion a little bit now because I've been completely avoiding it. Um, because I loved it so much, I'm not sure exactly what everybody's complaining about. So it's going to be fun to go and find out the things that people didn't like. Um, I'm guessing that um, one of the major complaints is going to be um, going through a door and then having the way locked behind you. And that's totally understandable. That's going to happen to a lot of people and they're going to miss out on loot or, you know, a bunch of things because they went through the wrong door. Um, <laughs> and that's a totally valid complaint. I feel like that one's going to come up a lot that a lot of people are going to be disappointed about. But, um, yeah. Oh, look at that. New Game Plus. I was wondering if that would be a thing. Play through the game again with all the upgrades and equipment obtained from a previous playthrough. And look. A different menu. I like that. Look at that. Wow. Hmm. Man, what a good game. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I kind of lost my train of thought about what I was talking about a second ago. Um, oh yeah, what people are going to complain about. Yeah, I, th I I do think that that's going to be a complaint that comes up in, um, in the gameplay section for sure. Um, obviously, that's a limitation of a game that obviously is made to look as beautiful as it does. They have to very, very intelligently load in and load out assets. So clearly, they, they had to do some stuff with that that probably wasn't ideal. And I wonder if the next Naughty Dog game is not going to have anything like that on next-gen consoles just simply because of the SSD loading thing shouldn't be an issue right especially on the playstation where you know they're touting all these very very clever ssd tricks that they're going to be doing um like hopefully that won't be an issue in their future games right is that they won't have that loading issue anymore therefore they don't have to lock you out of areas in order to load in the next area so yeah next gen will be fun to see how how they do it honestly i don't even care i've never cared that much about graphical fidelity um obviously when something is really graphically impressive i enjoy that but it's never been a requirement for me i mean i play all sorts of switch games and love them even though that they don't look the best that they could look right uh fire emblem three houses that game is not a particularly beautiful game but I fucking love it. <laughs> but it like I'm excited to see the way that um, the loading stuff will affect the way that game design can evolve in the future. That's going to be really cool. I don't even care if they don't upgrade the visuals that much. In fact, I would rather them focus on making gameplay um, evolve in certain ways rather than focus so much on graphical fidelity. But... Man, it's going to be fun seeing that. Uh, but I'm just rambling at this point, and I have basically no structure to the things that I'm saying. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end this, <laughs> since now I'm talking about next-gen consoles for some reason. But, yeah, I want to I want to hear the things that you love in this game. I want to hear the things that you don't love so much in this game. And I want to hear the counters to the things that I said I enjoy in this game. Um, because, yeah, I find that really interesting. Um... But yeah, I'm going to go and watch a bunch of spoiler discussions and stuff now because that's what I do whenever I finish a game. I kind of like put myself on lockdown where I'm not allowed to look at anything online about the game that I'm playing. And now that I'm through it, 
I can go and uh, immerse myself, essentially, which is one of my favorite things to do, is go and figure out what other people online are saying about it, what they loved and what they didn't love, which is what I want you guys to do in my comments as well. Now, I'm actually recording this on uh, July 2nd. So by the time we get to have this discussion, it's going to be several weeks, I think at least two weeks, um, before this episode actually comes out. So, um, But I want to have that discussion, so let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So if you enjoyed my playthrough, please do like and subscribe, comment. Anything that you do actively on my channel is going to help me grow. So um, I thank you in advance for whatever it is that you do, whether that just be a comment, whether that be a like, whether you hit that subscribe button, all of it helps me. So once again, thank you so much for everything you guys have done. Um, if you want to know more of my thoughts on this game, join the discussion in the comments below. Thank you very much and have a good day. See y'all next time.